So uh, tonight you've invited me to come down to the uh, Nothing Showcase, so the first big event for Nothing Records, your label. That's here in New Orleans. Yeah. I'm um, very much looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. I mean, I've, we've, Nine Inch Nails has toured with all three bands at different times. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all kind of were on tour, and we just ran them through mm -hmm. you know, to play together. That worked out real well. Good booking. You're going to see... Here's on my lap. Um, Prick. It starts with Poplate itself. <laughs> and then Prick, and then um, Marilyn Manson. Okay, so that's tonight. And give me the rest of the actual roster of everybody that's on Nothing. Um, other than those three, we have the... Coil. Coil, and... New band Trust Obey that hasn't been Kansas. Yet. And um, the Natural Born Killers soundtrack. You're quite a computer geek, is that right? Yeah. How many hours a week would you say you spend in front of the screen? Well, like if I mean, you're not on tour, obviously. When we write music, we do it on the computer, so right. all day long, pretty much. You must but have a pretty nice system. Gets the job done. I mean. <laughs> I'm not too technologically aware, you know. I'm sort of like still at my turntable. Yeah. Maybe you can teach me a little something about the CD ROM. No, I'll, I'll show you something. Show me some tricks. Yeah. Nice. Where do you keep your Grammy that you won for Wish? Where do you store that? I mean, like no, I was just thinking about that the other day. No, I don't really have an, a home at the moment. And last I saw it was at the Tate House somewhere. So it's in a box. Yeah. So it's not something that you carry around like in your bag and look yeah. at every day and know you've, you've accomplished something? Honestly, or? I mean, it's flattering to get an award like that, but that doesn't mean anything, you know, because who votes on that? It's out of touch music business people and right. other Grammy winners. Right. Like... Aren't you nominated again? For something, and we won't win, so... What, what are you nominated for? I know it has the word alternative in the title, but I don't know what... <laughs> Most alternative. Alternative performance or record or... I don't know. Video, perhaps? It's, I don't think it's a video. It's something for the album, but... Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, when you see, like, readers' polls and you win and stuff like that... That means a little more, because that, I mean, that's, that's the kids. That's real people that's that are, the real people. you know, buying records and that. Exactly. That's me. Voting. You. You know, if you want I mean, I know you. I voted two or three hundred times for myself. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, kidding. If you had the opportunity to redo the music for any movie of your choice, what do you think it would be? No, uh, none. None? None? You've been perfectly content with every movie think, soundtrack I you've ever heard? I think every movie I've ever seen is great. So I guess your standards no. aren't real high. <laughs> no, I'd, if I was going to, maybe something like um, the first Hellraiser, something in that genre, something that's kind of creepy. But Scary. Kind of like a, a Nine Inch Nails video like movie. Me. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, a lot of, um, just thinking back in people's careers, I know that a lot of uh, people that are in rock bands started off, you know, maybe they started off acting. What movies have you been in? Or have you, uh, well, I know you've been in one. Uh, none. <laughs> what are you talking about? I was talking about your, uh, your, your spot in the light of day. Mm, that's somebody else you're thinking of. Oh, come on, that was a great movie. Don't be ashamed. <laughs> it was an awful movie. And that was me getting me 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 me, me, me getting That's out done. of work for a week, really? getting paid like a hundred bucks to. It was fun to do. I mean, we just had a tiny little cameo as a fake band that was I playing in the spot. I heard it was your real band. No, it wasn't real. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Okay. Here's a good scenario. Let's say they decided there was like a big resurgence with Michael J. Fox, and they were going to do Light of Day too. Do you think with your success with Nine Inch Nails, you might be the leader of the band instead of just the keyboard player for Michael J. Fox? Or <laughs> is that something you want to pursue? Because I see it in you. No? No. Oh, all right. I just thought I'd ask, you know. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me of that. you ought to be in the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Trent, you're a man who takes things pretty seriously. Your band, now you've got the new label. Why don't you give me a little bit of your big picture, the philosophy of Trent on Nothing Records, and, you know, give me the spiel. <laughs> I, I think with nothing, um, I realized I, I was in a pretty fortunate situation with Nine Inch Nails, I and mean, we'd come from a real bad record label situation to somehow magically being in a situation where, with Interscope, where they really respected me and let me get on with what I wanted to do. And <clears throat> when they 
asked me, you know, do you want your own label, this sort of situation. Um, I thought if I can provide that shell to other bands and let them kind of share the situation I have, which is just one of artistic control, which I think any artist should have. I happen to be friends with Marilyn Manson out of Florida. Good. The hotbed of satanic rock. Exactly. There's a lot of, a lot of Satan in Florida. But um, it just the timing kind of turned out right, and I approached them about the idea of wanting to work with, with me on the label, on the label. And I thought they were a good example of a band that I think if they were in the raw, on the wrong major label, could be watered down into something that's not as interesting as it could be in the potential I sign. <laughs> Nothing records. Uh, the good thing is that Trent, uh, being an artist, you know, respects the artist's point of view. So it's uh, he happens to be the only person in the music industry that I trust, and um, they gave us the opportunity to put out our record completely raw and unexpurgated, and we didn't have to censor ourselves. And that was the most important thing because it's not worth it for me to do this unless we do it the way that I want to do it. Right, and he sees uh, that, and, and he sees that, that, you know. The bands on the label now, two of them, Prick and uh, Marilyn Manson, I've been actively involved in production and day-to-day -day right. stuff. You play it on the Marilyn Manson record, right? Yeah, and produce part of it, mix some of it, things like that. Um, the other thing, Pop Elite itself, is more of a licensing situation. Where, again, it's, they're an example of a band I've always thought was really good, but in America, never really had a chance because the label they used to be on just ignored them. Trent has picked up on people who are doing what they want to do, the way they want to do it, and and giving them the sort of platform, if you like, financially, to just to be themselves. Keep and, it uh, real. Yeah, and just which basically you won't get from a major company. A major company will realistically, at the end of the day, go like. Well, I can't hear any hit singles there, guys. So you then know. You're, just, you're on the back burner. Is there any hit? Is there, is there a crossover there, you know? <laughs> None of that and, with and, Trent? Well, no, they just, they just said to us, you know, like, be yourselves, make the record you want to make, because, like, they're into, they're into what we do, you know? And you can't really ask for any more than that. They could be lying, of course. Well, they? They, could, they could be lying. But if they are, you know, we've still had the cash off them. Excellent. <laughs> Trent, my friend. It's I know fair. Howard Stern is a big fan of yours. You How do you feel about him? You. I didn't burp. It sounded like a burp when you were It was sort of a gurgle. <laughs> it's a natural thing, you know? Howard like Stern. Burping. Howard Stern. Um, he loves you. Yeah, he was talking about us a lot on the radio. Then he came out and saw us when we played uh, Nassau, but I didn't meet him because I was didn't? sequestered backstage. Do you listen to his morning show? Are you a fan? What I've heard I think is pretty funny, but I, I rarely, A, am up in the morning, or B, think to turn the radio on. So. What about, now David Letterman is also very interested in you. I hear after Woodstock, he was just like, oh, Nine Inch Nails, and he's asked you to play yeah. on his show. Is, you're not down with Paul Schaefer? Is that something? No, I think Dave Letterman's funny. You know, I've always, always been a fan of his. And, um, but I don't think it's right for us to necessarily okay. do that. You're probably right. Let me tell you, I'm real happy you're on my show. No, I'm wondering if that was a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> you're funny. Find it nice. And exciting to be like on a label that's as artist oriented and while you're working oh, yeah, with a friend still, it's a good it's, experience it's great it's um, it doesn't feel like i'm on a, a label so to speak right you it's know like it this feels business yeah. relationship yeah it's, it's, like it's really someone great. that you trust yeah i think that's the main thing yeah if you don't want it other people will Uh, 
uh, Prick was basically Kevin McMahon, who was a friend of mine when I lived in Cleveland. And um, he had a band there that was pretty big before I'd ever lived in Cleveland called Lucky Pierre. But uh, had never gotten signed. And like Cleveland has this vacuum of bands that can't ever escape from Cleveland, the city yeah. limits. And um, just somehow we made acquaintances and every once in a while he'd play a show and get a band together and I ended up playing with him as a keyboard player in a couple incarnations of that band. And we just remained friends and then as Nine Inch Nails took off and I escaped from Cleveland, um, we'd always just kept in touch and he'd send me demo tapes every once in a while. Let me tell you, I've had a real nice time with you today. Could you tell me Thank one you. thing? Yeah. You know, you're about to take the big break. You know, we're not going to hear from you for a while. Is there anything that you're going to sort of put out there for the fans in between the end of the tour and the next record that we can look forward to? Um, we just filmed uh, two shows that we'll probably edit into some sort of movie that will probably come out late summer. Uh, we might put out a, a live Like a Nine Inch Nails movie? or? Yeah, just a performance of what we did, oh. you know, the show. And the couple nights that we got were pretty pretty silly shows, so it should be. So we can expect a, a bit of a comedy coming from that's that's a bit of a lots of blood and violence that. Oh, and okay. that sort of thing. Nobody's seen this for a hundred years.